Sweet. Okay, so we are here with La of Relish Detroit. Um, and Brittany unfortunately couldn't join us today because she's heading out to California, which is awesome. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about Relish and how you guys um, got started and how uh, you got interested in uh, making food? Yes, absolutely. So um, I'm with Jean Vieux. Uh, Brittany, like Lola said, is heading to another client. Um, we are Relish. We started in 2018. Um, we started as a catering company and we were just really focused on getting people to change their relationship with food. And so we started that with ourselves and we started it with our family and our friends and just started uh, shopping locally and introducing like, local food to our friends and family and just showing them how uh, how awesome it is and how what flavors can be produced when you shop local and uh, like shop at a farmer's market. And so um, we make sure that that is something that we instill within the business. So uh, we, we call it thoughtfully sourced. So we try to make sure that we know where the food comes from. Um, we feel like when you have a relationship with the food, um, it creates a healthy relationship with your body. And that's what we focus on. Uh, and so uh, we had the opportunity to travel to India in 2018. And we were feeling like super nostalgic right now um, because this is around the time that we were actually preparing to go to India. Uh, two years ago, and so um, we had that. We started to, like tell stories to each other about what we miss most, and uh, we just remembered that the first thing we made was doll. And Suda and Didi taught us how to make doll, and so it's super easy, super super easy. Uh, you start with one cup of lentils, and I already have that boiling on the side because that takes about forty five minutes to get ready. Um, very long process if you don't have a pressure cooker. So when you when we talk about kitchen essentials to have in the kitchen, um, I am working on a pressure cooker next. Actually, no, no. We actually was just gifted a pressure cooker from um, the Copper House. So shout out Copper House Detroit. Um, the great, uh, great, great, uh, uh, just great people. I, I had a great time when we were there. And so I actually have to put that pressure cooker to use. Anyway, so I was able to talk to my girl Lola at KGD and she got some of the items that we needed. And so uh, Relish, what we turned our cuisine to be is indie soul. So it's a mix of our experience in India and just having soul um, and for, for the people. And so I have chilies, have a hot chili because you can't go wrong with a chili. I have onions. I have already diced those up. I'll show you um, what those look like when we get to that process. Um, but they're fine dice. They're actually, let me show you what I got up here. Come on. Come on. Okay. So I have tomatoes, some ginger, some fresh turmeric from the garden, some collards. Some green onion, some cilantro, and of course I have my compost bin. So here we go. I remember when we would be in the kitchen prepping for this this meal. Didi would make it, and the most important part is tempering. And Didi loved chilies. So you would just be in the middle of cooking your meal or like prepping whatever you had to prep for today. And all of a sudden you like just can't breathe anymore because Didi has put so many chilies in the hot oil tempering. <laughs> and then we just, I just remember yelling like, Didi! <laughs> and she just laughed, just laughed. And so I just love how I was able to communicate in Hindi through food. And it just kind of reminds me of what life was like um, back in the day on farms when I think of my ancestors and, and how they had to cook and how they had to cook their way through, through food. And I feel like food is love and it's the best relationship that we can, we can have with ourselves. And so dough can be accompanied by rice, 
And then we came to find out that we love Jira rice and Jira is cumin. And when I tell you that Jira rice is something that I didn't know I had been missing in my whole life, I just found out like two years ago. The flavors from toasted cumin seeds is just beautiful. It's super beautiful. And it makes everything just has a super flavor, a super uh, like good flavor. And what I realized in India is that we were making subjis and masalas. And what the key point really was the spices. Actually, you want to put this tomato to the side. So what I like with prepping with the dog is that it kind of, it goes in order. And so it's a very mise en place uh, recipe, mise en place meaning everything in one place before you start cooking because you would definitely dislike yourself if you burn your mustard seeds or your jira seeds. It's just, it's just very, very, very bad. Very, very bad taste. And so a lot of the spices were fresh, fresh spices that were, toasted and then dropped into what we were eating. And so what I just cut up now is ginger and I mean garlic. And I've used one bug and you can actually cut the garlic however you would like. Um, fine chopped, very thin, minced, however you like. And now I have fresh turmeric and I'm only going to use about this much. And this again, I'm just going to do real thin slices of the turmeric. Now, if you want, you could put some gloves on because you will, that is a natural food coloring of pure yellow, like goldish. Mm -hmm. It's it's a really beautiful color. So if you feel like staining a white tea, then go ahead. But uh, for the most part, uh, be careful with turmeric. And so now I love ginger. And so I have like an inch and this may be actually more than an inch of ginger. And I'm going to thin cut that as well. You can julienne it. You can Chop it, you can mortar it in the pestle, however you would like. Mortaring it with fresh garlic and the turmeric is actually really good. It creates a, a paste. Um, it was a paste that we loved while we were in India. We mortared everything, literally. Any spices that we needed, anything we needed, fine, we mortared it. We even learned how to make uh, capsicum which is paprika. And that process is taking red peppers and dehydrating them. And so we sun dried our red peppers and made capsicum. It was, I felt so proud of that moment. I was like, I made paprika, look mm -hmm. at this. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so I'll just show you the plate. It's my mise en place of things that will go in first. You have the onions the chilies, the ginger, the turmeric, and the garlic. And these are staples that I keep in the house. Like I always have to have these in, in the house now. Uh, I call it, they called it the masala daba. So it was like our box of everything that we would need. It would be onion, whether it be white or red, tomato, cilantro, and chilies. Like you always had to have that box filled before we left for the day from work. And so. So where in India were you guys? We were in Goa, and Goa is in the west coast, um, right off the Arabian Sea. They were once ruled by Por Portugal. And so this actually the space, we were in uh, Mandrum or Ashwam, Goa. And this was actually where stars would come to vacation. And once we got there, I understood why, because 
you just walk miles and miles and miles of water and sand and beaches and you can find fresh juices just right on the side of the water. There's tons and tons of produce stands with at least 10 to seven varieties of mangoes, papayas, avocado, bananas. And while I was over there, it was kind of like, well, is this how food's supposed to taste? Especially when it came to the meat, because we would see the pigs, we would see the cows, roaming in the streets, um, no care in the world, watch what they ate and, uh, and saw their butchering process. And so their butchering process was village field. And so they would uh, process one pig for the family and then share that pig amongst each other. There were people that were responsible for cashews because they grew cashew trees. I mean, they grew because cashew trees grew there, which is custard apples on there. And they used that to make um, thinny, thinny, which is uh, Indian liquor. And I actually think I have enough of this. So I'm going to shift the plates over right quick. And so what that was, was a medium onion, three small tomatoes. You're gonna have, the tomatoes are gonna produce liquid for you and you're gonna have liquid from your doll as well. And so, well first, let me finish me some plus. I have collards and this is where we incorporate the sole to our indie. I love collard greens. I love black eyed peas. And like right before we left, Didi made us this subji. Subji meaning uh, vegetables walked and uh, spices, masala spices. And it had cauliflower, black eyed peas and potato and garam masala. It was the best thing I had had there. And I got to eat it with my hands. <laughs> it was the most liberating meal. I felt like for the first time, I felt like I was at home. Like it was something that my grandmother would have whipped up in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And so with the collards, I'm gonna chiffonine them because this way they cook faster and chiffonine with the collards, being able to take the stem out, rolling it up fine. And then just creating small ribbons. Down the collards. Collards actually made for good egg rolls and spring rolls. Um, if you ever want a raw salad and you want to get your collards in, this is a good way to do it with a little oil and salt, throw some cabbage in there, red if you want for some color. Are there different kinds of doll? Yeah, there can be so many types of doll depending on which region you're in. And so Suda would always get so frustrated with me because I'm like, but I want, I want to learn it this way. And she's like, no, that's, it's not taught like that. Like it's taught with love, it's taught with, who your family is, what you grew up loving and not loving, um, the type of tempering you do. You can have cardamom seeds, curry leaves. It's just so many things that you can add in it. Or you could just have it, just water, tomatoes and onions. Just simple if you don't have all of those ingredients. So the one thing about starting your tempering and this, you can see how the collards look. Um, you wanna make sure that you have a nice hot heat. And also with the reason why there can be so many dolls is there are so many different lentils that you can add in it. You can have a red lentil, a yellow lentil, green lentil, um, they also call them pulses. So if you ever heard the word pulses, that's the same thing as lentils. 
is there a specific kind of lentil that you prefer to use? Uh, we use a chana dal lentil, which is the chickpea split. I like that one because it's thicker. Um, so it has a little bit more texture in the dog. So look, that probably took us all of maybe 10 minutes to meet some plus that most important, you wanna make sure when you start with your cutting board, you have something underneath it so that your board doesn't move when you're cutting. You also wanna make sure you have a sharp knife um, if you don't have one, like really, sit, like really, really, really do your best to like invest in one um, because dull knives is actually how you get cut in, in the kitchen. It's not a sharp knife. <laughs> Only time I've really got cut with a sharp knife is, is when I've dropped it and tried to catch it, which is also a no-no. If you ever drop a sharp knife, let it fall. Just let it fall. Make sure your toes are out the way make sure you just out the way because <laughs> there's, you don't want, you don't want these bruises. You just don't. And so now that I've like gotten more <laughs> practice into not burning myself, not touching things without a glove or mitt, because I think I'm brave. I've, I've these, these scars are like from a few years ago. <laughs> So I'm getting better and I want I want you all to get better too when you're in the kitchen and, and like most importantly too when you're cooking, knife skills are important and making sure that you know how to uh, dice an onion right, uh, whether it's small dice or large dice because that help that plays in a role of cooking times of whatever it is that you may be cooking. So say for instance, if I was doing a stew, I will want my onions, carrots, and celery to be a little bit bigger because they're going to be going into an oven to roast for a while. So I wouldn't want to fine dice that and have dissolved vegetables <laughs> within the stew. So we're going to get there. And hopefully I come back more and show you all these different knife cuts that we can do uh, to make sure our food tastes great. But we're going to hurry up and uh, get into get into doll. So the next oh. skills class would be dope. Um I wanted to okay. ask you, I also wanted to ask you what are some of the other like uh essential cooking items that you have in your kitchen that you like in addition to a sharp knife? So other essentials I, I have a kitchen aid because I just love um cooking, uh baking. And I really wanted a KitchenAid. That's not essential, but I would say like making sure you have a spatula um, because I just absolutely just dread seeing people scramble their eggs with forks in their, their pens. It's like, let's just get one of these. You can get them from the dollar store and it'll, it'll save your eggs in your pen for a while. Um, a cast iron skillet is a must for me. And so, I want you to see how you can kind of see the oil is really getting there to be hot. I have my doll here. It's bald and it's yellow on top because I added turmeric to it as well. And so I start with my spices. This is cumin, mustard seeds, and fennel seeds. I'm like, what else? I surprised myself with this one because I didn't have cardamom. So I threw an extra love in there, fennel seeds. And so, and you can also add curry leaves in this process, but I didn't have curry leaves. So I'm actually using methi leaves, which is fennel Greek. It's dry fennel Greek. We used to grow this while we were in India. Um, Mashi would take the fennel Greek seeds and take them right to the garden and plant them. And before we knew it, we had fennel Greek microgreens. And how high do you have the heat on? I am on a medium. I'm on a medium. And then I want to throw in
And do you just cook, how long do you uh, cook the spices for? Is it a fragrant or? Uh, you can go like 30 seconds. But what happened was, is that I let the, I can tell that the oil was getting too hot. And so before I burned it, I wanted to make sure I saved the mustard seeds. I wish you can smell what I'm smelling though. And so that's two tablespoons of oil, one medium onion, a teaspoon of mustard seeds, a teaspoon of jira seeds, which are cumin seeds, an inch of garlic, I mean a clove of garlic, an inch of ginger, and a half, uh, yeah, about a half inch of turmeric. So. But your kitchen smells really good. It smells delightful. And I'm only cooking until the onions start to soften. And what you don't like, what is good, you don't want to uh, stir too much because you don't want to keep reducing the heat. But in this moment too, I add a little bit of salt. This is my first salting part of the stage. I don't normally add another salt, a pinch of salt again until tomatoes. And so we're looking good here. We're looking real good, smelling real good. And the reason why I like to keep the tomatoes on their own plate after I cut them is because it gives me extra juices to be on the side. And so then I take all those juices and add them in. And so I mix it until everything's mixed together. That way the tomatoes get an even distribution around the pan. And you can see it's starting to release some juices. Now like soften them up, like press them down so that they have equal heat. We used to do this on a tava in India. It was like this like hot plate that got real hot. So we were definitely making sure that our mise en place was together before we went over there. And so when the water is releasing from the tomato, this helps build the gravy for the masala and the masala being the spices that you end up throwing in. And then I'm going to toss in the collards. And I'm going to cook these until they wilt down. Was that garlic that you threw in with the collards? Yes. I had a little extra on the plate that didn't go all the way in. So I was like, no, we don't want that garlic over there. We want it over here. So how did you cook the lentils? So the lentils, I cooked one cup to three cups of water. But sometimes you have, to, with this particular lentil, it's thicker. So I would do one cup to four cups of water. Because you want to cook it until it's soft. You don't want it to have a, a bite to it. It's supposed to like melt into your mouth. It 
It smells great and I don't even have the spices in there. This is literally just the fresh aromatics from the beautiful vegetables that I sourced from KGD. Keep that growing Detroit. So then I, I have to always have two, I keep spices uh, that has turmeric on it, but it's my garam masala. And so that's what's another kitchen staple that's important for me. I always build my own spices. So I, this one is incorporated with like 13 different spices, a little bit of coriander, cumin, chili powder, cashmere pepper. Cashmere pepper you can actually get from the uh, Indian uh, market. There's one in Wayne State, uh, right off of Anthony Wayne. And so now this is the time I add in my spices. Turmeric. A little bit more salt. And then my garam masala. And you can also buy garam masala at the store. And so this is gonna to start to kind of turn it into a paste. All right, you can't see the mess up. So it's a paste. And I'm just toasting it. And this one, I stir a little more than the other part of the recipe because I want to make sure that the spices don't stick to the bottom and burn. But then it's still going to release its own. It's going to start to release its juices. You see it? Yes. Okay. So then this is going. I take my lentils and I add it in. And my lentils gave me the water that I need it. And this can be as tomatoey, as loose as you want it. This time I normally put like six tomatoes in it. and this time I just wanted to do three. So I can just show how simple it can be as well. And I start off where I just used a little bit of water from the doll and thicken it up, stirring everything around. But then I add some water as well. And what did you say you could eat this with again? Say it again. You mentioned earlier what you could eat this dish with. Oh, you can eat it with chapatis. Or you can eat it with the uh, rice, jira rice, uh, plain white rice, or you can have it with a garlic naan. Um, we like to eat this actually in the morning with scrambled eggs. Keto thinks that sounds good. <laughs> so you can see it's sticking in the um what is chapati chapati is actually like roti uh it's a it's just a it's like a tortilla close to a tortilla it would be like if you had roti tortilla and chapati where you just have flour salt and water and oil so you can make and it at home yeah easily can be made at home salt water oil and flour. And, you just roll and we it. made it with uh, 
whole wheat flour. And so it was so funny. I remember when we would do uh, when we would be making dough in a pressure cooker, we would laugh because we knew how many whistles, like we knew the exact whistles for <laughs> for when it was ready. Seven whistles is that. And so while that cooks a little bit, we're gonna come back over here because we have cilantro and we love cilantro. I want to put about this much in there. If you're not a cilantro lover, then half. You still need the coriander. One second. Whoops. Sorry, That's okay. Lou wanted to join in with us. <laughs> I was making too much noise for him. I think I disturbed his nap. So take our cilantro and we're just gonna rough chop it. Always want to cut away from yourself. And another good thing to add to this that I'm actually sad that I just forgot about right now is a lime, a hint of lime to help tame the spice that may be there. Will you have it to be mild, medium? Mine's going to be a medium because I only put one chili in there. However, you can put two chilies in there. So if you're really risking it, you could put three. That's a risk, but you can do it. And so have my finely chopped cilantro. I'm gonna just dump it in. Dump it in. Those are serrano peppers, by the way, that I... You gave uh, me serrano peppers, red serranos? Mm -hmm. Those are beautiful. Okay. Would pretty much any hot pepper work? Depending? You can do it with any hot pepper. Yeah. Any hot pepper, but we we really use like green chilies. They were the small green chilies when we had them. Okay, you can't see my bow. I find the mise en place, like the cutting up your um, vegetables first, also help with cleanup. It also who? Helps with cleanup, helps to keep your kitchen a little bit cleaner. Oh my God, it helps so much. Especially when you have everything like in a little uh, bowl or whatnot. It just helps. I like it. I love it. So let me show you what we got here. Looking good. I'll add a little bit more water in there. Well, we got glory here. Smelling, looking delicious. You can add as much turmeric or chili powder, however you, how much you want. Like this could be golden yellow if I added even more turmeric to it. Um, you can use dry turmeric if you don't have fresh turmeric. You can use dry ginger if you don't have fresh ginger. We just wanna show you what it tastes like when you have the fresh ingredients. 
Yeah, we'll be, we'll have ginger and turmeric in the store for the next several weeks. So. All right. Feel like I've been transported again. How did you decide to go to India? Uh, e from Gabriel Hall. I had, I was at Folk and I was their prep cook during the time. And so she knew I was just looking to like get deep into cooking. And Matt from New Delhi, they said they needed a chef to come out and work. And so I had already had my passport and I asked B, I was like, hey, I'm about to do this interview for uh, India. She's like, India, uh, you can't go by yourself. And so I did the interview, I got through. And then, so I just asked like, hey, you know, I have a business partner here if you're looking for another cook. Um, and they were like, absolutely. So then we, we both went. And it was just amazing. And so let me show you what we have here. That looks amazing. We got a doll. It can be as thin or as loose as you wanted to. Like if I wanted to put more water in there, I could have and I could have made a soup, um, like doll soup. But this is more like a stew. And you'll have a fresh lime on the side if you wanted to. With rice or with chapati. That and so that's doll inspired from Suda. I'm um, just lucky to uh, still have her in our. We just lucky, super lucky to still have her in our lives. Like we talk to her uh, often. Just hit her up on WhatsApp or anybody over in India. So they're really like family. And yeah, that hopefully one day you can taste off. this. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, I was saying that hardly took any time at all. Like that's, it's a pretty simple dish to whip up. And a lot of the, like we were talking about, a lot of the ingredients are in season right now. Oh, soup. And, and it can be so versatile, um, especially when you get in tomato season. The dolls are really delicious because the tomatoes are at prime time. Um, but you could, if I wanted to, I could put potato in this. I could put parsnips in it. I can put Brussels sprouts, like cauliflower which is like aloo gobi. We've showed that recipe before, but it's just so versatile, the things you can do with it. And just, I can add vegetable broth if I wanted to get more depth of a flavor instead of water. But working economically, it's five ingredients um, at most probably. Mm -hmm. Sweet. And can you um, tell us how folks can support Relish right now? Where can we find you and keep up yes, to date? Yes, so okay. right now, we are doing meal preps. We're doing intimate catering of uh, 30 or less. And you can find us on Instagram at experience underscore relish, or you can email us at experience relish at gmail.com. We around and we just trying to change your relationship and, and feed y'all some good food. So if you want us to uh, be in your kitchens at your parties, just hit us up for the holidays. We appreciate you guys. Yeah, we are still talking about the lunch that you made for our staff meeting several months ago. So. I love making sandwiches. I I used to, when I was at this grocery store that I worked for, uh, during one of my trainings, I had to make like 100 sandwiches in two hours. <laughs> and I mean, like slicing the meat, cutting the tomatoes, the lettuce, because we produced the sandwiches in the store for, and it just had to be out by nine. But I, I just got into a love for making sandwiches <laughs> at that point. Yeah, well, can confirm. We felt the love for sure. Thank you. So yeah, always fresh, always shop local. Um, if you can't get local, phone a friend that may be able to. Um, and yeah, shout out to all my Black entrepreneurs, <laughs> people of color, everyone just out here working hard. We see yeah. you. Yeah. Sweet. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, go vote.
Yes, go vote, please. Vote. Yes. <laughs> please. Thank you so hey, much. Thank you for having me, Lola. I gotta bring we'll a dish by, so you let me know where I can bring some food, okay? Okay, I will. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.